In this video, we're going to take a look at how to export a low-poly and a high-poly mesh from 3ds Max over to Substance Painter. We'll also take a look at how to best set up your mesh for the best projections for the normal map and the other rest of the maps. So the first thing you're going to need is um, you're going to need UVs on your low-poly mesh. I've already set up the UVs for this mesh, but uh, just to show you, this is what they look like for this mesh right now. This mesh has been made um, as for a game, for, it's made for UE4, so there are some triangles. It's also been made pretty quickly, so the topology is not very optimized, but it'll do for this video. The next thing you need to think about when um, you want to export a high poly and a low poly mesh over to Substance Painter is that the high poly needs to be overlapping with the low poly, otherwise Substance Painter will not be able to project the maps correctly. So, when you make your low poly and export that over to Mudbox or ZBrush or whatever, you will most likely retain your position in world space. However, there are some scale issues there. So, what I often do is that I, I work from high poly to low poly, and I then create my low poly in 3ds Max using the extend tools up here and the conform tools. Um, so I originally did this here, and just since I already have the uh, coordinates, I'm just going to type them in here now. But if you do this, you might, uh, if you don't have this, you might need to do a lot of work manually. There's some disagreement out there in terms of what is the best positioning for a mesh. Some people say that it can be overlapping a lot and it's not going to cause any problems. And there are tools in Substance Painter to overcome that. Personally, I do prefer to keep the high poly outside the low poly, but just for the demonstration purposes here, we're going to do the overlapping uh, technique here as you have the tools of Substance Painter to get that projected correctly as well. The final thing you need to consider is that you need smoothing groups on your um, low poly mesh in order to, for the normals to be calculated correctly. So what you want to do is you select your entire mesh and hit one here. There are of course different setups for your smoothing groups that you, you, you should consider. I'll put a description in the um, a link in the description which has a very very good guide for how to set up smoothing groups and UVs for the best possible bake without getting um, errors. Finally, Substance Painter is um, its not going to matter for this mesh since it's only one object, but if you have multiple objects, it's very important that you change your naming convention for these meshes to reflect what is the high poly and what is the low poly. And it's worth noting that Substance Painter is case sensitive. So be careful when naming your meshes and make sure that you put the same letters with the same same capitalization throughout the entire uh, system you're creating. So I'm just going to name this tree underscore low since it's the low poly mesh. Then we have the high poly, which will be tree underscore high. We should now be ready to export over to System Painter. So let's get to that. You want to have it over to File, Export, and Export Selected. Find a export location. Let's make a folder here, and it's down on the bottom. Substance Painter Guide. Let's call it just that. Now this is the low poly, so we'll call it Tree Low, just so we know which file this is. You can triangulate this in Substance Painter or in uh, the max, it's not going to make that much of a difference early on for the uh, for the most of you, I think. But just since I like to keep it on triangulate um, here to make sure I get the same results from max to Substance Painter to UV4. But if you uh, if you want to use quads, you should you, you don't really need to think about this because you're going to still going to be using the low poly mesh in max after you bring out the textures from the painter but just to keep things safe on the safe side i'm just going to triangulate the mesh now but don't worry about this unless you specifically need to bring the mesh into 
a game engine like UE4. Uh, include the smoothing groups and preserve edge orientation. Um, this tangents and binomials, I find that it creates some issues, but some guides say that you should uh, keep this ticked on. Try to experiment with it and see what the results you get, but it's not strictly necessary. Finally, you want to make sure you have a good version here. I'm just going to use 2018. Then click OK to export, and the mesh should be exported. The same goes for the high poly. Tree. Hi. Save. Now, you don't need to triangulate this mesh. So you can untake that, and it's 2018. Good. And I'll be back in a second in Southern Spinner. And here we are in Substance Painter. I'm using Substance Painter 2018.3.3 uh, since I'm I, I bought Substance Painter on Steam and my license has expired, so I'm not getting the 2019 version. But the differences should not be that big. So to import your mesh, you want to head over to File, hit New, and you want to go here, File, and select. And let's go to our desktop. And we named, what would we name our folder? We named it Substance Painter Guide. Tree Low, this is the low poly mesh. This is the object you're gonna be painting on, so make sure you select the low poly, not the high poly. Next, you wanna decide what kind of resolution you want for your document. Um, I think 1K will be sufficient for this. And I don't need the quite cameras, and I don't need UDEMs, because I only have one uh, tile with UVs. So just hit OK. And that should, in a moment, bring the mesh in. Here we go. Now, what we need to do is to bring in the high poly as well. And on my screen, I got it over on the left here. For the most of you, it might be over on the right here somewhere. But what you're looking for is the texture set settings. And you want it, once you have that open, you want to head down to bake mesh maps. And here, you got a bunch of buttons you want to go through. But let's start with the most important one. It's the high poly. You click this little button here and it'll open up this dialog box and you can select the tree high FBX. Now I did not paint in any ID maps, so we don't need to bake that. I also recommend that you put the output size for your bake to be twice uh, what you're using for the document. It'll give you better results. Now, depending how on how well you set up your mesh um, in terms of the overlap, or if it was outside or inside, this is something you need to the, the max frontal distance, distance and the max rear distance is something you want to be tweaking a little bit. I find that leaving it on the default works great in most cases, but since we have more overlap than before, we want to. Uh, I mean, uh, more like it's inside and outside. You want to increase this a little bit. You can leave these settings as you are. And since the match setting is where we um, need to think about how did we name our mesh, if you did not name your mesh with the suffixes high and low, you, you have to leave this on always. This is going to give you some projection errors as it won't be able to, um, if you're working on a mesh with multiple objects in it. It's, when it bakes, it projects the light out and it doesn't make sure it's only bouncing off the same mesh. This is something that can be a good thing sometimes, but most of the time it's not very good. So you want to change that to by mesh name most of the time. Next up is the AI. This will significantly increase your bake times. This will of course give you the best results, but it's always not always necessary. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to four by four by now. But if you're new to this and you're not sure how things are done, you could probably do a test bake with none just to see how it ends up, just to see that you're baking properly. You can also change the suffix names here in case you want to use a different naming convention, but these are the default substance painter settings. What I've also noticed in here is that you can go down to um, ambient inclusion and you can change this to only say mesh name as well, but it won't matter for a mesh, but it's something that you should keep in mind with other meshes. It might be interesting to do this with some of the others as well, but like I said, it won't matter for this much mesh, but keep it in mind that these are options you might have to tweak in other meshes.
So once this is done, you can just click Bake Mesh, uh, Bake Default Material Mesh Maps, and we'll be back once that is done. And here we are with the normals and everything calculator. Now, what we need to do is to make sure that there are no, no projection errors. I already spotted something down here, actually. It looks... Uh, it might be fine, but... Yeah, it's fine. Let's see if there's anything else that's not looking right. It looks pretty good, actually. So, if you're having problems that they have areas that, that look like they haven't baked properly, what you can do is you go back into Bake Mesh Maps and you can try to increase or decrease the setting. Um, some cases, having it set too high will make um, the projections look really weird because it'll protect the light from this here, uh, ray out of here, and it'll hit this, and the normals will get all wacky. So, don't set them too high, but if you have ears that have not been baked properly, it might be a good, idea, a good idea to increase the ray distance. And I think that's basically it. You're ready to paint your textures now. You, I highly recommend using a non-destructive workflow, using fill layers and masks when you paint your textures. I might do a tutorial on this later, but for now, have a good evening and Good luck with your texturing.